second that I've dreamt about you, babe I don't know how I should tell you, babe But lately I get lost thinking about you I admit that I can't be without you The air that I breathe doesn't mean nothing If you're not here, giving me something I can hold on to Baby, please don't leave Welcome back to my channel. So today is Monday and I was supposed to restart chemo last week but my blood count levels weren't high enough so I went for blood work last week. So I didn't end up having chemo last week so tomorrow I am going again for blood work to see if my counts are back to normal and I can restart it. So that's what's been going on. But I thought I would do a book haul because on the weekend we went to those little free libraries. I've talked about them before on my channel. I think they're everywhere actually. So if you go to little freelittlelibraries.org, you can find these little libraries that people set up on their front yards. And basically you bring a book and if you see a book that you like and you want to try then you basically switch it so it's like kind of like a library system but you get to keep that book so we went to quite a few on the weekend and i saw my ex-boyfriend which was a little awkward but he didn't see me so it's fine so anyways i wanted to share the books that i got and then i also wanted to do an update on the book that i spoke about in my last vlog before we get into that so i'm wearing my tough sob cap and my tough sob sweater so if you're interested in checking those out i'll leave the link to the website below if you're new to my channel and you don't know i am an ambassador for this cancer charity and basically if you buy a sweater a hat a shirt or if you just give a donation that money goes towards donating a cap to a cancer patient going through treatment so again i will have the link down below if you're interested in checking it out but with that being said let's get into the book review and then the book haul so this was the book the memory keeper's daughter by kim edwards that i was starting to read and one of my subscribers actually recommended this to me but I gotta be honest, I couldn't finish it and I got about, I think it was like 140 pages in and I just couldn't finish it. And I don't really know exactly why, I have a couple theories as to why I didn't like it. So first off, it was a bit triggering for me, so the first chapter and the second chapter talked a lot about pregnancy and birth and loss and that kind of stuff and one of the main characters goes through like this depression so you no know, it just put me in a bad mood reading the book and i don't know if it's because what i'm going through that's why it put me in a bad mood and then also i just found it very very slow like i was 140 pages in and not a whole lot happened so I thought to myself, why am I forcing myself to read this if I'm not enjoying it? So maybe I'll pick it up again another day, or maybe my mom can try it, or I know my nanny might like this sort of story. So if you don't know what this is about, it's basically about this couple, the husband is a doctor, and his wife goes into labor um, during a snowstorm so he ends up having to deliver the baby and they don't know that they're having twins so one of the babies is fine and healthy and then the other baby has down syndrome and he tells his nurse to basically take this baby with down syndrome to an institution so she actually ends up taking the baby and raising the baby herself but like I said, I'm 140 pages in and nothing else other than that has really happened and that was all in the synopsis. So yeah, I might try it again one day, but we'll see. Maybe my nanny will like it or maybe my mom will like it. And so to start with the book haul, I actually got, uh, we went two days. So the first day we went to a couple and then the second day we went to some that we haven't been to before. So the first book, and I actually read this and finished it yesterday, so this only took me two days to read, 
It's called Maybe in Another Life and it's by Taylor Jenkins Reid and if you recognize this author it's because she wrote The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo which I really enjoyed. So when I saw this book I didn't know she had these books but I guess she's written quite a few books before Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo so I decided to give this one a try and it took me two days to read and I really enjoyed it. It's basically about this girl named Hannah and she's 29 and she basically doesn't really know what she's doing with her life and she's been moving place to place, job to job and basically not feeling fulfilled so she ends up moving back home to Los Angeles and she goes out with her best friend one night to the bar and she meets up with her ex-boyfriend from high school and she basically has to make the decision of whether she wants to go home with her best friend or if she wants to stay with her high school boyfriend and it goes through both decisions so um, whether she went home with her best friend or if she went home with the ex-boyfriend and it, the chapters go back and forth between the two decisions that she could have made and what happens after making that decision so I thought that was a pretty cool concept and it was just like a cute book and really easy to read so I really enjoyed that and then I started this book today it's called The Vampire Stalker I don't know, I'm getting really into like vampire sort of witchy kind of fantasy I guess sort of books I think because it's starting to become fall and it's close to Halloween. Like I said I, w I read Twilight and so I looked at this book and I thought it was really interesting. So this one's about this girl who she is really into this book series about a vampire stalker so he basically goes around and kills vampires and saves people so what actually happens in this book is basically the book the characters from the book series come to life and she has to help the vampire stalker stop this one vampire from killing people in Chicago where it's set and this one says it's from the library I know that the library near me does a lot of I think they do two book sales a year just selling uh, some of the old library books so I thought that was cool and then also this is a Canadian author so it's a pretty short book I think it's I think it's only two 255 pages I think and I'm about 80 pages in oh 90 pages in so I'm liking that so far and then this one I got it's Anna and the French Kiss I've just heard a lot of good things about this one I think it's just like a young adult romance set in Paris so I thought that one would be kind of fun to read and then this one we didn't pick up from one of the little libraries but my nanny had like a bag of books that she wanted to get rid of so that so she gave us the bag to take to these like little libraries and switch them out but I seen this book and I thought oh maybe I'll read this one so this one's called a man called Ove and it's basically about this grumpy man and he befriends um, the daughters of his new neighbors and my guess is that they find out that he's not the crabby man that he's cracked up to be or that he makes everybody think that he is so I thought this one might be interesting and then with the theme with the vampires I found this one it's the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix and I feel like I've seen this one in Indigo before but this one's basically about this woman she's in a book club and I think she's divorced and she meets this man and meanwhile children on the other side of town they go missing and she, now she's not really sure if this man that she met is basically Prince Charming or if he's you know it says Patricia wonders if he's connected is he a Brad Pitt, a Bundy, or something much worse? 
So I guess she enlists the help of her book club is what I'm guessing. <laughs> so I'm going to try this and see if it's good. And then on a different track, I got this other book. So we picked up a couple of this author's books from these like little libraries. My mom's reading one right now and she said it's like kind of predictable like what's happening in the one that she's reading, but she's still enjoying it. So this one's called The One and Only and I think it's about 33 year old Shea Rigsby has spent her entire life in Walker, Texas, a small college town that lives and dies for football, a passion she unbashedly shares. Raised alongside her best friend Lucy, the daughter of Walker's legendary head coach Clive Carr, Shea was too devoted to her hometown team to leave. Instead, she stayed in Walker for college, even though a job in the university athletic department after graduation, where she has remained for more than a decade. But when an unexpected tragedy strikes the tight-knit Walker community, Shea's comfortable world is upended, and she begins to wonder if the life she's chosen is really enough for her. As she finally gives up her safety net to see out an un unexpected path, Shea discovers unsettling truths about the people and things that she's always trusted most and is forced to confront her deepest desires, fears, and secrets. So I thought maybe that one will be good. And then the last two are from actually the same author. So the first one is Gradling. So like I mentioned, I've been trying to get more into other genres. So I thought I'd try something. I think this is like a fantasy. I don't know a lot about this. I've just heard the good things about this one. And there's also two other companion books. But then I looked it up and it said that a lot of people recommend to read this book first. So if I end up liking this book, then I can try and find the other two books. So it's called Graceling, if you, if I didn't say that already. And then the last book by that same author is Jane Unlimited. So this, when I was reading the synopsis of this, it kind of gave me the same vibe as the Taylor Jenkins Reid one about having um, multiple directions and way uh, directions in which your life can go based on a decision but this one I feel is more fantasy based and not like contemporary based like that other one so it'll be interesting to compare the two so that is the book haul and I will see you tomorrow Today is Thursday and yesterday I didn't vlog much because I was editing my craft room video and if you haven't seen that I'll link it up here. So I was editing that and then I also just wasn't feeling too, that great so I just took a chill day and didn't really do much which is okay to do. Um, I think we all need some days where we don't do a whole lot and we just rest so that is what i did but today i had a meeting so i mentioned this before but i'm doing healing journey which one of the cancer resource centers um, in my area 
they host uh, this healing journey course so I did level one back in June and now they're doing it again level one and level two so today was the first session so that took up most of my afternoon and then I also got a call from one of the oncologists the fellow and he checked my blood work and it's still too low the levels are still too low for chemotherapy so my chemo has been delayed now for a third time because I got blood work when I was finished radiation and they, it was too low so we were going to wait two weeks and then I got blood work done last week and they were still too low and then I got blood work done as you saw this week just a Tuesday that passed and that came back and my levels are still too low so so it's looking like my chemo may happen on September 20th but still not sure I have to get blood work yet again next Tuesday and see what's going on and it's a bit frustrating because it just keeps delaying the timeline of my treatment and I want to be done as soon as I can so I can give myself some time to heal my body to heal before I do start school next September um, and yeah so struggling with that but I am taking this time still to do things that I enjoy doing and I felt really tired the past couple of days so hopefully tomorrow I can get back into doing some Cricut projects and maybe some scrapbooking not sure yet but that's pretty much the update right now oh I'll give you a book update so I actually read the vampire stalker which I showed in my haul at the beginning of this video so this book was a very quick read it was only I think 257 pages and it was like a young adult it was pretty young adult but it kind of transported me back to the time when I would read some of these books and it was just like a happy feeling like I remember going to the library this is actually a library book but I remember going to the library when I was younger and I remember going to the library and picking out books like this and reading them and I remember this one series it was about werewolves I guess but it like really brought me joy to read it so it was kind of nostalgic to read this and right now I am starting Anna and the French Kiss which again is also young adult but I feel like on the younger end of young adult if that makes sense I'm not enjoying it as much yet but I'm still gonna give it a try and see how that goes I'm only like five or six chapters in so that's it so it's Saturday and I did have plans for today, things that I wanted to do, but they didn't go to plan and I am not doing great and I just wanted to come on here and say that I know somebody else commented this on one of my last videos, but it's okay to not be okay sometimes and I'm not okay right now and this week has just been really hard because i've been having a lot of trouble sleeping and when i finally do get some sleep like it still takes me a couple of days to get back to somewhat normal and then it just feels like the cycle continues of not being able to sleep for a night and i think i'm just being hard on myself too and I'm I don't know if it's hard on myself but frustrated that I'm feeling this run down and this tired and everything when I'm off treatment and I'm just getting really discouraged every time that I'm going for blood work that my levels are still too low and some of them are going even lower and I don't know what to do about it and I can't restart chemo and that means that it'll be longer before I finish and they haven't really told me anything that they can do 
it's just kind of like a waiting thing to see if next week I'll be able to do chemo on the 20th that's the schedule right now but that can change obviously and I don't know like I just I want to do so much but I can't do anything and I know that's okay because I'm going through so much and my body's recovering <laughs> but it's just so frustrating to feel like you're so young but your body feels like like I'm 22 and I feel like I'm in a 90 year old's body so it's just frustrating and I know I look happy and positive, and I am happy and positive, like, a lot of the time, but I s still cry a lot and get emotional, and I think that's okay, and I just want to show anybody who's going through something like this, who's going through anything really hard, that it's okay to cry, and it's okay that if you're not okay right now, and don't worry, I do have support and I am doing counseling and I'm doing stuff with the cancer support center in my area. And I have my mom and my nanny, obviously, but it's just hard. So I might take a nap and I'll be okay, but right now I'm not. Okay, I'm not crying right now. I just had to get that out. Um, but I also wanted to add to that. I think another reason why I'm feeling so emotional and that kind of thing is all my friends went back to school this week at the beginning of this week. And it's sad, you know, not being able to start with them and be in that excitement. But I know deep down to that. I wouldn't have been able to handle it just based on how I'm feeling physically and even emotionally too. Even though I did make the best decision by deferring, it's been hard to see, you know, people progressing with that kind of thing and you're not, which I know I'm going to be in their same position next year when all of this is over. Hopefully it'll be over by then and I'll be excited and I'll know that, you know, it happened for a reason in a sense maybe, so I don't know, I thought I'd also just mention that, but yeah. So it is later, same day on Saturday. I do feel a little bit better physically. I did have a shower and I think that helped me feel a little bit refreshed. And I had some dinner. We watched a documentary about Betty White. And now I want to try and do a cricket project. So my mom's birthday is actually tomorrow and I want to get a card done and I want to make her a card. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I do have most of the design already, so it's just a matter of loading the machine and getting the Cricut to cut things and then gluing and taping and all that kind of fun stuff. I am going to make that. My mom's birthday is tomorrow, September 12th, so if you're watching this on September 12th, then it's her birthday. I'm also now in my pajamas and I have this little sweater sort of thing. This is just kind of like a comfort jacket it's not really much for style but it was my mom's a long time ago and then it kind of got passed down to me or I kind of stole it so anyways I also wanted to do a bit of a book update because reading has been really fun for me and has been really helping me you know um, forget about everything that's going on and that kind of thing so I said the other day that I was reading Anna and the French Kiss and I'm about I'm a hundred pages in and it's not that I don't like the book it's just I don't think I'm in the mood for this kind of like a romance and it's 
like a very slow romance i guess it's kind of like bitten romance in the sense that the one person has a girlfriend he has a girlfriend and the main character is suppressing that she likes him and anyways i don't think i'm really into that right yet so i'm gonna put i've been i put this one down i do think i'm gonna finish it after the book that i'm reading maybe that i picked up so I'm, i started graceling so i'm pretty new to like fantasy sort of books so i wanted to try a fantasy and this one i am in chapter 10 which is page 96 and i really like this book so far i started it yesterday and i didn't know if i was gonna like it or if i was gonna understand it because i know fantasy can get really confusing with like a new type of world that you have to get used to so one little thing that i did was so this book in particular it's in a world with seven kingdoms so they like explain like all of the seven kingdoms in like the second chapter but i wanted to write on a sticky note so i wrote like all of the seven kingdoms what their names were and then who was the king of each kingdom because they like kind of reference the kings here and there and like i want to remember which one is which so i don't get confused so I'm liking this so far, so if I end up really liking it, there's also two companion novels. I'm going to try and look for those. And then I don't think I've shown this before, but I actually started like a little reading journal. So this one's from Indigo. I bought it as a gift, and I basically just write down the title of the book. I don't know if you can see that. And then like a summary depending on how long if i really liked the book it might be a long summary like i really liked for instance where the crawdad sings so it's like three to four pages of summary and then i write like a paragraph of my overall thoughts and reflection and then i give it like a rating at the bottom and so i've been doing that for the books that i've read um in the past i think since June. June was when I was like really starting to get back into reading and I just thought that'd be kind of a fun way to remember the books that I've read and like see like some of them I just write like a little blurb if I didn't really like the book so I'm a bit behind I still haven't written about Twilight or that other Taylor Jenkins Reid book or the Vampire Stalker that I just wrote so either today or tomorrow I kind of want to go back and do that i was thinking of doing like another sort of reading journal maybe starting in january where it's more like scrapbook sort of kind of thing and then have this one just as like a way to really like explore my thoughts about a book i don't know i have a lot of notebooks so i think that'd be just kind of fun to use up a notebook and then be able to like look back and see all the books that I've read in the year so I thought I would show that and I'm going to show me making the card and then I think that'll be it for today and the other thing I wanted to say about the clip from this afternoon I know it's really good to watch like videos that are really happy and everything but I think it's also really important to show that you know not everybody is happy all the time 24 7 and i think showing that clip too of me being sad and i don't know i think when people show that kind of thing it kind of makes you feel less alone and i hope that that did make you feel less alone if like i said before if you're going through something really difficult because i think that can make you feel worse too at times where like if you're in like a bad headspace or you're just not having a good day and you're watching you know people either on social media or in a video or something like that and they're like so upbeat so positive and you think like why can't i be like that just remember that you know they're probably crying behind the camera and i know i've cried probably almost every day this week and that's okay it might sound like a lot to some people but 
cancer will do that to you and I just wanted to say that and I hope you all are doing well and thank you so much for all of your kind comments always it just means so much to me and it always makes my day that much brighter when I get to read your really sweet comments so thank you so much for that Happy birthday! So we Aww. just got, she just got this in the mail. Not in the mail. Well, not in the mail. <laughs> it was delivered. Bay boxes. Yummy treats. Love them. And what does it say? Love Teresa. It says, happy birthday to my fierce bestie. So my mom's best friend ordered this for her. It's a nice rose. Let's take... Aww. Aww. <gasps> Aww. Look at all of that. Oh, there's some smash hearts in there. Oh, what are those? Oh, what's that? What is it? Hmm. It's like a toffee kind of nut. Ooh, that's a big one. Look at how pretty it is. Chocolate covered pretzels, strawberries. Were those filled raspberries? Raspberries. Yes, they're raspberries. Oh, I think those things, I think they were cookie dough. I could be mistaken, but I had one of those before. Mm. Is there something you'd like to say to Teresa? Thank you. Bestie. Watching. My little bestie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so nice. I don't want to wreck it, but I got to eat it. <laughs> having a little bit of trouble falling asleep but way better than the night before and today we're celebrating my mom because it's her birthday and I realized I didn't show you the card that I made last night so here it is it's not exactly how I wanted it to turn out but it's my first card using the Cricut and my mom loved it and then I used the pen on the Cricut to write a little note in there so that's the card and not sure what else we're gonna be doing today but I thought I would come on here and end the video I'm thinking I'm going to dab a little bit in my planner because to be honest I haven't really been using it since before radiation and that's fine, like I want to get back into it though because I've missed a couple months but I find when I'm using it regularly it really helps me so even if I don't have a lot planned this one's more of like a wellness planner anyway so I just like to use it to put appointments but then also like sometimes I like to track how I'm feeling like this week I tracked how I was feeling and then I like write something each day that made me happy or that I was grateful for and I use a lot of positive quotes and pretty colors so I'm gonna get back into this so anyways thank you so much for watching this video I'm not sure if it's gonna be going up on Sunday which is tonight or tomorrow night but We'll see how the day goes. Like I said, it's my mom's birthday, so I want to spend as much time doing what she wants to do. And yeah, that's pretty much it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not already, and I will see you in the next video.